So enclosing your 3D printer is something that a lot of people forego and you might actually be one of them yourself. But typically this doesn't really matter because enclosing your 3D printer doesn't benefit you when you only print with PLA. Really enclosing your 3D printer only comes into play when you print with higher temp materials like PETG or ABS and sensitive materials like ABS. And so this is the first year, 2023, that you actually might be able Able to purchase a fully enclosed 3D printer worth its salt. But that being said, not every fully enclosed 3D printer is actually going to suit everyone. The first few that come to my mind are going to be the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, the Crowley K1, or even the likes of Quiddy Tech with some of their new X Plus 3 lineup. But the question that comes to my mind is what do you do if you don't already have a fully enclosed 3D printer or if you can't upgrade to a fully enclosed 3D printer? So for years now, manufacturers have been offering these pop-up grow tent style enclosures that you can score for less than 50 or $100 on eBay or Amazon. These tents are a great budget option, but they definitely fall short in quite a few categories. So your other option is going to be getting a hard shell enclosure like this number two box from Fanatter. Both of these options are going to have their pros and cons, but for this video in particular, I'm gonna be focusing primarily on the hard shell enclosures because they're the more premium option and that's what I have in front of me today. So let's jump right into it. And I'm gonna be giving you the number one reason up front and that is because you can control your temperature and your humidity in one of these boxes very, very easily. So controlling these parameters is something most people have heard about, but few people actually dive deeper and look into. So putting a standalone sensor directly inside of your box is going to be very easy and it's gonna tell you exactly what those readings are. And when you read those numbers and those values, it's very apparent that the inside of one of these chambers is a much more optimal temperature and humidity for 3D printing. So temperature control alone has the opportunity to fix countless printing problems, all the way from bed adhesion and warping to overall print quality. And printing ABS is one of the more common, very difficult materials to print. And so to prove the effectiveness of an enclosure on ABS, I printed one single model, once with the doors open and once with the doors closed, both in ABS. And both of these models are very, very prone to warping. They're just simply a flat ABS panel. And the results are honestly shocking. With the door closed, the ABS panel printed almost perfectly first try. And with the door open, this panel is completely completely and entirely unusable. And typically people are only printing parts in ABS when they're functional parts. So you can have a little bit of deviation in your print quality, but when you get something that is this bad and the specs are this far off, it's completely and entirely unusable. So if you wanna learn more about thermals specifically related to the bed temperature of a 3D printer, go over to Daniel's channel at ModBot where he recently uploaded a very detailed video related to the bed and how it heats up. And if this video right here doesn't convince you to purchase an enclosure, that video might. So the next reason is gonna be another really important one and that is printing with toxic materials. Once again, speaking about ABS. So one year ago when I was preparing to build my Voron 0.1, I had never actually printed an ABS, so I had no idea what I was in for. And I suspect many of you guys are gonna be in that same boat. So trust me when I tell you that ABS really, really stinks and it is not something you can hide from. And even worse, it is incredibly toxic, so you really shouldn't even be in the room as it's printing. Guys, I never actually tell Pepper to come in the video she just comes in the video whenever she wants. This should be proof of that because I'm not gonna grab her and bring her back in frame. <laughs> So I would never recommend anyone be in the room as they're printing ABS, but if you only print ABS occasionally, one part here, one part there, you're probably fine to stay in the room. But if you're printing a load of ABS parts or you're doing it on a weekly basis, it can actually be toxic to your body. And one really nice feature about a lot of these hard shell enclosures is that most of them actually come built in with a fan and typically that fan has a filter on it. 
So in the case of the number two box, I can definitely say a little bit of those fumes were escaping as I was printing these parts, but it wasn't that bad and I could easily sit in the room and I could barely smell that ABS was being printed. So there has been some scientific research on charcoal based filters and their effectiveness at filtering out fumes, specifically that ABS releases. And I am not one of those scientists, so I really can't say too much about it, but what I can say is that the smell does go away and at the very least it makes it able to be in the room as you're printing ABS. Now, while the first two reasons actually prove themselves as functional for printing or for safety purposes, this final reason is just a little bit cheesy. It's actually kind of a whole conglomeration of things that just come together that just make for a really nice user experience when printing with a hard shell enclosure. This first mini reason is going to be really important for people like me that are printing in a very small enclosed space. And that is that hard shell enclosures, well, they are a hard shell so they have a hard bottom and without a hard bottom if you place a printer on the carpet you're going to choke out and overheat printers very rapidly but with a hard shell enclosure obviously it's hard so when you place the printer on the hard shell enclosure it's not going to choke so the next is that you can scrape small bits of plastic like purge lines and skirts off of the print bed directly into the enclosure and it's going to be contained now this might seem kind of weird but for me personally scraping small skirts and purge lines into the enclosure is just really convenient and when the whole entire enclosure becomes messy maybe once a week i can go in and vacuum everything out or clean it out once a week rather than cleaning every Every single print when it's done. These LEDs provide a serious viewing benefit and there's a reason why everyone uses the light on their phone when they're looking at their printer. That's because it's just hard to see what's going on between the nozzle and the print bed. So a hard shell enclosure is going to provide a very good storage spot for stuff like filament or tools or any other miscellaneous items. Another very welcomed and really important thing to mention about using a hard shell enclosure is that when the doors are open, of course the printer is at typical volume, but when you close the doors, the print volume goes down drastically. Really, there are just so many tiny value added convenience features that I didn't even know were ever going to exist until this number two box came into the studio. So while this was not a dedicated review of the number two box, a lot of what I mentioned in this video came to my attention purely because this is the first time that I have used a dedicated hard shell enclosure. So I think I will always find myself defaulting to a printer that is fully enclosed from factory, but after using this, I really, really like it because it has completely and entirely transformed my M5C into a printer that was good, but not spectacular into something that I can print absolutely anything on. So if you guys already have an enclosure, let me know in the comments if I missed anything major. And if you don't have an enclosure, guys, check out the links in my description. Even if you don't intend to purchase something, check out the links and maybe you will become more informed and maybe you will decide that it is now your time to purchase one. And of course, if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in absolutely any way, I would greatly appreciate it if you drop a like and a subscription to the channel. Otherwise, guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.